All right, Dalton, now we're going to do our big 12 predictions heading into the 2024 season. What we're going to do here is our Offensive Player of the Year in the Big 12, Defensive Player of the Year in the Big 12, Coach of the Year in the Big 12, our Sleeper Team in the Big 12, who is making the Big 12 title game and who is winning the Big 12 title, and how many teams are making the college football playoff out of the Big 12 as well. Start off with the Offensive Player of the Year, Dalton. Who are you going with? Uh, this is kind of a swing because there's some really good candidates when you talk about what's going on at Arizona and what's going on at uh, Colorado and Ollie Gordon at Oklahoma State. I'm taking a big home run swing here. I'm going to say Garrett Green from West Virginia. I think the breakout's coming. We've seen it in the grading profile. We've talked about it a lot in the offseason. He's one of our top 10 quarterbacks in the country. He, he led the nation in big-time throw rate, 31 big-time throws last year. Led all quarterbacks in rushing touchdowns. I think with one more season of just like experience and getting into this offense after his first year starting last year, I think Garrett Green's in for a huge season. Honestly, I could see him in the top five of Heisman contention by the end of it. I think he's in for a big, big year. I think the Mountaineers are in for a big, big year. Man, taking a home run swing on a guy who only takes home run swings as well, Garrett Green. I, I kind of love that, Dolan. That's, a, that's a kind of a hot call out right there. I'm going with the easy one. I'm going with Ollie Gordon, the running back out of Oklahoma State. I think he is going to put up massive numbers once again. You see right there, 1,732 rushing yards, 21 touchdowns. He led the nation in rushing yards, second in rushing touchdowns, second in yards after contact as well. Only had 19 carries in the first three games. Again, it means he averaged 150 yards a game over the last 11 games of the season. That is absolutely bonkers numbers, man. And Oklahoma State only had the 103rd best run blocking grade as well. He had 330 receiving yards as well, which is the third most by a Power 5 running back last year. And he is going to be the engine and maybe the entire car of that Oklahoma State offense this year. Mike Gundy already said uh, how they're going to punish Ollie Gordon for his DUI arrest. Is they're going to give him 50 carries in the first game. This guy is going to get a ton, a ton of mileage on his legs this year, which might not help his NFL evaluation, but it does help his case to be a Heisman Trophy candidate, a Doak Walker Award candidate to win again, uh, and be the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year as well. So let's go over to Defensive Player of the Year. Dawn, who are you going with here? I'm going with the biggest name of all of them. I'm going to take it to Colorado and take Travis Hunter. And I know there's going to be concern about snap counts and playing offense too and how much he's doing both. But he's probably got the best ball skills of any corner in the country. And that makes sense considering his skills at receiver, right? But last year he would have had five or six interceptions had he not missed the better part of four games. I think he's a lights out corner. He's playing in, you know, there's not as many great passing games in the Big 12 as there were in the Pac-12 last season when you're playing Caleb Williams and Bo Nix and Michael Penix and all these teams. I think Hunter's in for a huge season as long as he plays all 12 games and he doesn't gas out. I'll take him for Defensive Player of the Year. I'm actually going with a different corner for Defensive Player of the Year out of Big 12. That's Cario Davis out of Arizona. It's freakish size, man, six foot four. had a 28% force and completion rate last year, uh, which was fifth among Power 5 corners. And in single coverage, Dawn, he had more force and completions at, with 14 than he allowed catches with 11. So he is a lockdown corner, man. You made the comp before to Tariq Wollin. I love that comp as well. Takario Davis is a freak of nature, man. And I really thought about Travis Hunter for this too, but I think Takario Davis just edges him out as a slightly better cornerback uh, as of right now. So I went to Cario Davis for my defensive player of the year. Who is your coach of the year in the Big 12, Dolan? Uh, I'm taking Brent Brennan from Arizona. I think if they're going to win the conference and he's going to do it in his first year, obviously he's going to have to do a really good job keeping that thing together, right? I think it's always tough for a first-year coach to go into a new conference, a new team, especially a step up from the Mountain West for you know from San Jose State. I, I think, though, they're going to put it together. I think they, they're the number 21 ranked team to to start the season in the AP poll. I think that's way too low. I do think Arizona is the best team in the conference. And I think he's going to win coach of the year, and we'll get there. But I think I think we both think they're going to win the Big 12 in his first year as head coach. Yeah, I also have Brent Brennan for this as well. I actually picked Brent Brennan for my national coach of the year too. So I have to pick him here for Big 12 coach of the year. And for everything you just said right there, man, usually these awards kind of go to the coach who exceeds expectations the most. And a lot of people are doubting Arizona mainly because of Brent Brennan right now, right? Because Jed Fish left. And yeah, they bring back a lot of talent and Nofa Fita, Tetra McMillan, Takario Davis, who I just mentioned before, uh, and Jonas Vinea, and among other players. But they're like, ah, but the new head coach from Brent Brennan, who like was a good coach at San Jose State, but let's see what he can do at the Power 5 level. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people this year. I think he will. And I think, uh, like, right, like I said before, they have the seventh best odds to win the Big 12 this year. Seventh best. That means that the sports books indicate that they're an average team in the Big 12. They are not an average team in the Big 12. They have a seven and a half win total as well. Don, you and I probably would have set the line at like nine and a half, ten and a half if we were setting the lines for Arizona, right? So I think they're going to 
kill that win total. They're if, shock a lot of people in terms of where they're ranked right now, too. I'm with that. I think Brent Brennan is my easy pick for Big 12 Coach of the Year this year. Who is the sleeper team in the Big 12 that we should keep an eye on for? I think there's a couple of them, and I think one of them is Kansas. I think, look, you forget that they won nine games last year, even through all their quarterback injuries and Jason Bean playing a lot of the year and all of that. But Jalen Daniels is really, really good when he's healthy, right? And if he gets to play all 12 games, Kansas is going to have an elite offense, man. I think that's going to keep them – that's going to keep them in and win a lot of games, and they've got a pretty favorable schedule as well. They're one of the teams I'm looking at in the top three or four of this conference that can make a lot of noise and maybe even make the Big 12 title game if things break right. Ooh, love that. I'm actually going to go with a team, Dolan, that was in our top 25 preseason ranking – but not in the AP poll top 25. So that kind of constitutes why they're a sleeper for uh, for us. Uh, West Virginia, I'm going with right now. You mentioned before Garrett Green could be a dark horse Heisman candidate. I love that call out. Elite run game outside of him as well. Jaheim White there uh, and CJ Donaldson as well. Elite left tackle in Wyatt Milam. A really, really good secondary as well at West Virginia. I think they, they were with, led by Aubrey Burks at safety. I like West Virginia a lot, man. I think they're going to surprise a lot of people next year. They surprised a lot of people last year. And people are still downing them right now, even though they bring back so much talent from last year's team. So uh, they, I believe they won nine games last year after having a win total of like five and a half or something like that, or four and a half or whatever. So I think, once again, they're not a top 25 team in the preseason ranking. I think they are going to be a top 25 team this year. So I got West Virginia as my sleeper team right now. Who is making the Big 12 championship game, Dolan? Who is winning the Big 12 title and securing a college football playoff spot? So we've talked about them a lot. I think I think Arizona is certainly going to the Big 12 title game. And I think one thing that I, I didn't know until last week when I was going over this is their game at Kansas State doesn't actually count as a conference game. Yep. It's a previously scheduled non-conference meeting. So it's a, it actually doesn't count towards the standing. So this year and next year when Arizona plays Kansas State, it doesn't count as a conference game. So that means their one really, really tough in-conference game is at Utah, which they very well could lose, but I think their schedule favors them. Noah Fafita is definitely one of the best quarterbacks in the conference. You've got the best receiver in the conference in Tetsuro McMillan. You've got Takario uh, Davis. I think they're getting there. And then when I put it together to figure out who's in second place, kind of like the problem I had in the SEC, I had a three-way tie. So, again, I wasn't going through all the tiebreakers and stuff. I'm going with Utah in second place. I got Arizona beating Utah. Even if Arizona loses at Utah in their first meeting, I think they get revenge in the Big 12 title game, and they're making the playoff. I have the exact same title game as you, same exact winner as well. Arizona over Utah. Kind of the same thing I had for the Big 10, Dolan, where I think Arizona loses to Utah at Utah. And the same thing, I think Ohio State loses to Oregon at Oregon, but I think both teams get revenge in the conference title games. I think Ohio State wins a Big Ten title. I think Arizona wins a Big 12 title. Um, I think, like you just mentioned before, Arizona is so talented, man. They bring back so much talent. Utah as well, man. Utah, 8-5 and five last year with so many injuries. Not only to Cam Rising and Brand Keithy, but all over that roster. They're battling injuries all year. And they still went 8-5. So now you add back your two best players in Cam Rising and Brand Keithy. Two most important players probably as well. I think it's yeah, the Kyle Whittingham's going to have a really, really good year with that squad, as he always does for Utah, right? So I think Utah will be there as well, but I think Arizona ultimately gets revenge on them in the Big 12 title game. How many playoff teams, Dolan, does the Big 12 set? Is it just the conference champion, or do they get to uh, add a couple more teams? The Big 12 is the one that got squeezed for me because I had two from the ACC, and I've got Notre Dame in as well. It's just, for me, the way it added up, there was just no more spots to go, right? So I just have Arizona coming out of the Big 12, and it's going to be an absolute melee, especially if it's for one spot and no more than two. I think there's legitimately eight or nine teams that could at least make the Big 12 title game. This is the most wide-open conference. It's going to be chaos every single week, but in part because of that, I've got just Arizona making it. That's a big reason for me, too. I have Arizona as the only one making it, and that's a big reason, Dolan, is that the fact that I think they're going to beat up on each other. And ultimately, like, this is the problem with the Pac-12 for so many years. Is like, yeah, they have so many good teams, but they just beat up on each other. And all of a sudden, the best team has two losses, and you can't put a two-loss team in the college football playoff in a four-team era. I think uh, it's kind of the same thing with Big 12 right now. I was like, man, I just think they're all going to beat up on each other this year. Uh, so Arizona ultimately gets in as the automatic qualifier, but – I, just, I don't know if another team is going to win. I don't know if a 10-2 and two Big 12 team will get in over a 10-2 and two SEC team, right? Or even a 9-3 and three SEC team if we have one as well. So uh, I, I just don't know if we have enough 
teams are only going to win uh, 10 or 11 games. So that's what we got for our Big 12 predictions. As you can see right now, both of us have Arizona over Utah in the title game. I have Ali Gordon for Offensive Player of the Year. He has Garrett Green for Offensive Player of the Year. I have Takario Davis for Defensive Player of the Year. Dalton has Travis Hunter for Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, we both have Brent Brennan, the new Arizona coach, as our Coach of the Year. I have West Virginia as my sleeper team. Dalton has Kansas as his, as his sleeper team. And both of us only have one team, Arizona, making the college football playoff out of the Big 12 this year. But that's what we got for our Big 12 predictions. Be on the lookout for our college football playoff predictions. We're predicting all 12 teams that are going to make it, and then every single round of the college football playoff leading all the way up to the national championship game and see who Dawn and I pick to win the college football national championship in 2024. So let us know what do you think about these predictions, and uh, be on the lookout for that video coming very, very soon.